Today we're going to talk about jet engines. In particular, we're going to talk about the air division of General Electric. So our team is performed by myself, uh, Sergio, Juan Pablo, and Rodolfo. So in today's agenda, we'll discuss uh, the air division background of General Electric, a little bit of the history. Then we'll speak about the operating environment of the company, what, ha what is the external and internal environment, and we'll get to the discussion of conclu and conclusions of the, of the presentation. Well, we will start with the initial ages of General Electric's on the jets uh, industry, and we'll continue. The history started at the first war, uh, first world war, and it was by the United States looking for a um, a company that that introduced uh, technology for 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 develop the first company in the industry. So we have that we know that General Electric started like uh, um, searching for technology, but also another company and uh, searching for for the same technology. So we got the first military aircraft competition. The both companies started uh, taking several uh, um, groups, and then the army called for a demonstration. In, on the demonstration, uh, General Electric got 350 horsepower turbocharged aircraft, and that was the like a super turbo. So they gave them the, the first aviation government contract. That was the initial for General Electric, Electric to and form the world and creating like a very huge amounts of, 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 of turbo jets. Uh, on the history, General Electric get some alliance, for example, with CFM, and with this, General Electric transformed the, the industry not only on, on military, uh, also in, in civil market, so they can afford like uh, commercial flights and, and, and more, more huge. And with the alliance with Pratt and White and Whitney, they get like the maintenance of the turbo uh, of the turbo and the, and the parts of of units produced, so that, that this company can can maintain all the products that you know electric um, they they make. Today we're going to talk to you about the external environment of jet engine manufacturing from General Electric. My partner Paul Pablo is going to explain to you how regulation works. In the airplane industry, there's a lot of regulation that should be passed in order to provide a service in a commercial or military way. The three main associations that regulate the use of the aircraft are the, in Europe, the European Aviation Safety Agency, in the US, the Federal Aviation Administration, and in an international way, the International Civil Aviation Organization. That is the one who tells the rules to the other ones. The five main purposes of, of the ICAO are the operational safety, that is to make all the planes safe to use for people. The air navigation capacity and efficiency, that is how the planes work in all the world. They manage around 100,000 flights a day. The security and facilitation, that is the security of all the planes, to check if every part of the planes work correctly. The economic development, that is to check if all the, all the service providers manage the same amounts of costs and, and utilities. And the environmental protection, that is the, to check that the emissions that all the planes takes are not affecting the environment. Okay, so the next slide we're gonna speak about the economy. So quite recently we can see that the, air, the main, main jet engine manufacturers and airlines are having extreme profits. And this is good because it means that their net cash flow which is available they have been investigating, according to PricewaterhouseCoopers, in new developments for new technology to be less disruptive with the, with the environment. Uh, please, the next slide. So how are we in terms of global competition? Well, first thing we can observe in this map is that the jet engine manufacturers are mainly clustered in the United States, Europe, and Asia. And General Electric, or General Electric is mainly in the United States and Asia, however, with its joint ventures with Pratt and Whitney, it has access to the European cluster manufacturers. So basically, General Electric has presence around all the globe in the main clusters of manufacturing. And then if we look at the percentage of market share that they own, they don't actually by themselves have a lot. They only have between 9% of market share. However, if we look at the joint 
ventures that they have with Pratt and Whitney and other companies, they almost account for 80% of the market share for joint agents. So, so in a few words, General Electric has a great degree of control of the market. So how do they meet customer expectations and who drives uh, the customer needs to the manufacturing? Well, in this chart, we can understand how, who is the process driver or who is the owner for the jet engine manufacturing technology and definition and specifications, which in this case are the OEMs for the jet engines, the same manufacturers. So what they are responsible for is to go all the way downstream in the supply chain, identify the customer needs, and be able to pull them through the supply chain towards their own manufacturing. This requires a lot of integration with the downstream components and also with the upstream because they would require to meet those specifications with high quality materials and in short lead times. Now, in this, when we speak of the customer needs, what exactly are they? So, we have the quality qualifiers and the quality winners. And as we all know, the quality qualifiers are those that enable them to be part of the market. And if they don't have them, they won't be able to be part of the market. And the quality winners are those that make them be actual leaders in the market. So, for the two main consumers, the end consumer and the aircraft OEMs, they're main two clients of the jet engine manufacturers, they, they basically have to have reliability. In this market, you cannot have an airplane fail. It is completely disruptive to the brand and the image, so they have to have reliability. They are even speaking of achieving eight sigma in level of reliability. That's zero parts per million. There, are no, there is no tolerance for defects. And now the, the customers, the consumers, do not ask for quality in the raw materials, but in able to to provide that reliability, aircraft OEMs need to deliver, need to have that quality materials and a, at a competitive price. Now, what makes General Electric a winner? Well, for the consumers, is the reduced noise from the jet engines, the reduced vibrations, and of course, the low price. When they have a low price to the OEMs, the final ticket for the consumer will have also a lower price. Now, the OEMs are requiring them to have short lead times, high fuel efficiency, and lightweight, which is basically all related to cost. They want to have the lowest cost meeting the minimum quality. Now, uh, in terms of the time-based competition, this is an interesting market because currently the way to forecast the market of jet engines and aircrafts is that you would make a correlation between the growth rate of the GDP and the growth rate of air, air traffic. So if you take those two variables and see them through time, you will see that they are really correlated. Maybe not in the proportion of change, but they are. The, it is a key indicator for jet engine manufacturers to be able to forecast how much they will be manufacturing. Now, what has really been seen during the last years is that the ratio between these two rates of growth means that it has been increasing, which means that even if the GDP is increasing just a little bit, now the air traffic is increasing more and more and more. So that is telling us a little bit that the market is becoming more volatile and that the customers will tend to be driven by price. If they have the acquisitive power to purchase tickets, they will purchase them. Okay. So right now we're going to speak about the internal environment of General Electric. <laughs> Specifically, uh, we're going to speak about the business objectives, the strategy, and my partner Rodolfo is going to help me with introduction. The main objective of GE is uh, to still being the leaders of the, the many business they have, including the aviation uh, business, and also to reduce the lead time in this business because it is really expensive uh, to commit mistakes in, in the deliveries uh, to, with, uh, with our suppliers. Next. Uh, our business strategy is uh, based in this uh, term called brilliant factories, uh, brilliant factories means that they have uh, two main uh, uh, points. Yeah, it is uh, the additive manufacturing and the lean manufacturing, and it is all about uh, having new systems to control and analyze all the process to make more efficient every uh, single part of of the total process and also to have autom uh, automotive, uh, automotive uh, process because uh, it is um, more efficient than having human uh, doing the assemblies because we're, we're not totally perfect.
And well, the manufacturing strategy and the process are the high quality, as we mentioned uh, in the in last uh, uh, slides. Uh, we talk about the high quality, and it must be an eight sigma uh, suppliers. We have uh, to have specialized technici technicians in our factories. We have uh, to have twenty four uh, manufacturing hours to achieve uh, to to yeah to achieve our production rate. Um, it is uh, an automotive software control, and our orders they are mainly based in a made to order, but they are also have like an engineering to order if they have another specification for any airplane. So in this organizational chart, uh, there's not much to say because it is just as a traditional organizational chart. So it has a CEO <coughs> and a main uh, manager for each one of its divisions. Uh, for aviation, currently David L. Joyce is the CEO and vice president of that division. Uh, next slide, please. So just to have in mind all the discussion we've been building upon, we thought of what could be the functional conflicts of General Electric, and we believe that this might be real because of the type of customer needs they're trying to satisfy and the targets for profit generation and uh, market leadership. So the first one we think about is that, as we mentioned previously, they need an eight sigma standard quality. This means that they will incur in high cost to ensure quality, which is not aligned to their strategy to be competitive, competitive in terms of price and cost. So we imagine that there's, there could be a lot of friction in terms of between of the quality department and the finance team regarding the balance of cost, how much we are investing in quality, and how much we're actually incurring in costs. The second thing we think about as the as a main conflict, functional conflict inside a company, are the lead times against the competitive manufacturing costs. And what we say so, when you want to be flexible and be able to deliver in the shortest lead time, you usually need high capacity, high instantaneous capacity and flexible uh, manufacturing cells, which are more, more expensive than other type of technologies and they are even more capital intensive. That means that it is counterintuitive to think that we will have the lowest price if we are continually seeking to have the shortest lead times. And finally, uh, there, there's a lot of, there could be or we believe that there could be a lot of friction between the R&D partnerships they have and their own private R&D in terms of intellectual property and who's owner of who and who should be invested, who should be funded, what should be pursued, because at the end there is limited capital and the allocation of capital has to be between the joint ventures and the privately owned R&D. So our main takeaways and conclusions are the following. For me, General Electric is one of the key examples in the industry that is capable of mixing two value compositions. They're able to have customer intimacy with each of their customers and they're also able to do it at a competitive price. For me, the most important thing is the interconnection between the supplier and the customer to achieve the final customer needs. For me, it's how they, they manage to stay at top competitive levels in all the markets that they are involved in. For me, that the first, second and cold war gave GE a lot of opportunities for innovating. So this has been the presentation of General Electric. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank, Thank you. you. Woo!